Welcome everyone, this is Amir Mushtaq from U Council. Anytime when someone goes to court and commences a civil action, there is some sort of unfairness, wrong or harm that underlies that court action. There is some unfairness for which that person is seeking a remedy from the court against certain other parties. So how does an unfairness or wrong translate into a court action in Ontario? That is something that we'll talk about today. So you can have a broader understanding of how any wrongdoing can turn into a court action. We begin with our usual disclaimer that this lecture is only for educational purposes and should not be construed as legal advice. If you have any specific questions regarding your issues, you should contact a lawyer or a paralegal or contact the Law Society of Ontario for a referral to a lawyer or paralegal. First thing that you want to keep in mind is that not every wrong is actionable. Not every unfairness that you may face, you are able to go to court. That is not possible. And let me explain that concept by way of an example. Imagine a scenario where a parent promises to a child, let's say that if you get straight A's in your exams, I'll buy you an Xbox, right? And the child agrees to it and child gets straight A's. Does that become a legally binding contract? Because under the principles of a legally binding contract, there has to be an offer and you're making that offer that if you get straight A's, there has to be an acceptance and, and the other party, the child says, yes, I will get straight A's. And then the promise is that if you get straight A's, you will get an Xbox. So that's the promise. There is an offer, there is a consideration, and there is an acceptance on part of both parties. So on general principles of contract law, this will be considered a contract. But does that particular promise in this situation, does that become a contract that is enforceable in, in courts, in our Ontario courts or in Canadian courts? The answer is no. Um, let me give you another example. Uh, in, and in this example, similar, similar situation, but now the parent is required to provide the child with the necessities of life. And that may be something that may be actionable. The society at large may take legal action against a parent uh, who is not or who's failing to provide necessities of life to a child. So what does this example or the two examples indicate? Well, what, what it tells you is that boundaries of law are determined by the society. So we as a society decide what kind of issues, what kind of matters will form part of the domain of law and which kind of issues will not form part of domain of law, right? So, and so we as a society, in a democratic society, we decide this and, and whatever we agree to, um, even, even the criminal code, so no, that's a decision of our society to say that what kind of acts will be considered criminal in our society and will be punishable by criminal courts. And similarly, there are social wrongs or other similar wrongs that we, we as a society believe that they should be actionable in our civil courts and, and that's what we have decided and that's actionable. So not every single wrong that we face in our lives is actionable and we go to court. It's a simple um, principle that we all understand, but it is worth repeating so that we have clarity on how any unfairness translates into an actionable wrong. And when we say actionable wrong, meaning a wrong that can be taken to court. So how does uh, an unfairness of any kind turns into an actionable wrong uh, for our court system? There are generally three ways. First one is that there is a breach of a statutory obligation. There is some obligation on part of somebody to do something or not to do something under a specific statute in Canada, either in Ontario, either a provincial statute or a federal statute. Um, and, and so that person, that party has failed to abide by the obligations under the statute, which gives rise to, <coughs> excuse me, the, which gives rise to your right to take that party to court as long as the statute provides for that. The second common way to make an unfairness to an actionable wrong is a breach of contract. And we all kind of understand this concept that if there is a contract between parties and one party fails to 
perform the duties under the contract, the other party can take a legal action against the other party. And third part, uh, third way, the way you can take someone to court is under tort. And I will explain uh, the concept of tort further in the next few slides. But let's take um, each of these examples. So we know that statutes are created by the legislators, you know, the parliament uh, enacts statute. We know we, from, from our knowledge of how our society works that our uh, parliamentarians, legislators, they sit down, they decide on an important issue, they create a bill, and then the bill becomes uh, some sort of statute um, in, in our province or in Canada. One of the places where you can find all of Canadian uh, statutes is called Canli, C-A-N-L-I-I. -I. Um, this is a, a website which is non-profit and you can access all of Canadian statutes uh, in this website, canli.org. That's the website. So, for, so if you go to this website, for example, if you want to look at all of the Canadian federal statutes, um, you can go here and you see that statutes and regulations are listed here and you can access these statutes alphabetically. And here you can see that how many federal statutes from Access to Information Act to authority of the Federal District Commission to have acquired certain land. So all kinds of issues, Anti-Terrorism Act, Apprentice Loans Act, I've never heard of that act before, but all kinds of issues are dealt with in these statutes. And you can find that information free on uh, Canly or other websites that are available in Canada. And so statutes are created underneath statutes. There are regulations. Regulations give a bit more flexibility in terms of how a particular statute needs to be interpreted and how it needs to be implemented. So regulations are a bit, bit more broader, a bit more practical. Uh, statute provides an overall direction, but combine uh, these two provide for the obligations within that statute. A common example of a statute which gives rise to certain duties is human rights code. So many of you may not know, but there is no civil right um, to sue someone for discrimination. The right arises from a specific statute in Ontario, it's human rights code. In, in federal jurisdiction, it's uh, Canada, uh, Canadian Human Rights Act. So that particular statute provides that discrimination is prohibited on certain grounds. So it lays out specific grounds because discrimination is a very broad term and it could happen in so many um, parts of life, but there are specific grounds, for example, race and religion and, and sexual orientation and disability and whatnot. So there are specific grounds laid out. So you can only sue someone for discrimination on the basis of those grounds. And then there are certain um, circumstances in which discrimination or certain relationships within which a discrimination act can be brought forward. So those are defined in the act uh, in Ontario, it's human rights code. And then the act also indicates that if it's a discrimination matter only, then you cannot really go to court, but you have to go to human rights tribunal, right? So it, it, the power to commence an action uh, arises from this specific legislation. So that's an example of where you where an unfairness, in this case, discrimination uh, becomes an actionable wrong through the power that is vested through this particular statute. So that's an example of how you can approach the courts or tribunals through a breach of duty under statute. Second is contract. And we know generally that contract between parties provides the duties that each party must perform. So you have an obligation to duty, the, the obligation to perform the contract based on the terms of the contract. And so the liability in terms of contracts arises from the breach of contract. So one party fails to do what it is required to do under the contract and the other party can take legal action. Third is tar tort, which is a fascinating uh, area of law. I find it extremely fascinating because it talks with, um, with a lot of social philosophical dimensions of how we find liability um, and, and legal action. So um, it's a fascinating area, but so what is not covered in contract may be covered in torts. <coughs> One of the things that you want to note is that tor in tort, a duty is imposed by law society. So it's not your choice. It is not a situation where you are agreeing with another party to do something or not to do something. This is this duty is automatically imposed by the society. And what does the tort do? 
the liability in tort arises from the from the cause uh, from the injury or harm that has been caused by one party so it's an injury based harm based kind of liability that is imposed by society in general so a common example of that is motor vehicle accident you and i do not form specific contracts with other drivers on the road that we will drive carefully this duty has been imposed on us by society that when we're driving on roads we have to be careful and not negligent in how we drive and if we cause an accident and cause an injury or harm to someone else then that person has the ability to take us to court based on the principles of tort so it's not a contractual principle but tort similarly product liability is again a tortious act so you you buy a car um, the, the brakes were manufactured improperly and it causes you uh, into an accident then you have an actionable wrong against the manufacturer of that particular vehicle so these and and there are many more examples professional liability is another example where the negligence of your physician or your accountant or your lawyer can give rise to an actionable wrong that you can uh, take against that individual so tort is a very broad category but generally speaking these are some of the examples that i can give you in our ensuing lectures i'll actually go over all kinds of different torts and explain how uh, those torts become actionable wrongs and what are uh, the grounds to to uh, bring a court action for those torts now contracts and torts have some similarities what are those um, both deal with a breach of duty right so uh, there is uh, whether duties imposed by law or duties imposed by agreement of parties but they're both dealing with a breach of duty and both are providing certain damages at the end of once the, once the judgment is made the court awards certain damages to one party or another what are some of the differences one difference is consent in contract contract is entered between parties when they knowingly and without coercion agree to something so it's it's an agreement of the parties and as I, as I said earlier tort there's no consent required from you or from me or from anyone else this is a duty imposed by law this is not something that we sign into by choice we being members of the society automatically accept uh, our duty in tort similarly in damages with respect to damages the concept of awarding damages uh, in the contract law is generally to put the pa party the party that has been wronged in a position if the contract was not breached right so uh, the court sort of puts itself in a position where if there was no breach where would this party land at the end of contract and try to put that party into that position <clears throat> a common example could be that if the contract was performed properly you would have made one hundred thousand dollars at the end of the contract then the court will put you in that position and say you're entitled to $100,000. That's a very broad, simplistic example, but putting the party in the position that it would have been in if the contract was performed. But in torts, tort is based on compensation for the harm or injury. So whatever injury has occurred, the court is trying to provide compensation for, for that specific harm or injury. So underlying concepts of award of damages for contract and tort are different and so they will give rise to different amount of damages in each case and one more thing you want to keep in mind is that punitive damages are generally not awarded in breach of contract they may be but generally not but punitive damages are um, awarded in tort cases and and you know we we've all heard these stories um, of cases in the US against McDonald or some other large corporation where they have committed a tort and courts have awarded millions of dollars in punitive damages. So that's that's where you, you can imagine that the tortious, uh, in tortious cases, punitive damages could be awarded. So what is it that you want to take away from this lecture is that whatever kind of unfairness that you want to take into court, it has to fit into a specific cause of action or causes of action, right? So you cannot just simply stand up in court and say, this person does this thing unfair to me i want you to give me x remedy or x damages you have to figure out that in your specific set of facts what is the cause of action is it a tort of negligence is it a breach of contract is it a breach of a specific statute that you have to figure out what what is the cause of action that is going to allow the court to give you the remedy that you are seeking and this is where you know you go and seek legal advice from from lawyers because 
They, because of their experience and knowledge, have a better understanding of different causes of action or different statute, and and then they can they can channel your specific facts, the wrong that have been done to you, into a specific cause of action that the court understands, and then the court can provide you the remedy. So that's why this concept of understanding how any unfairness turns into a specific uh, cause of action or or an actionable wrong is important for someone who wants to understand the legal process in general or commence a court action in in certain specific circumstances of that person's case so generally speaking the the liability uh, or actionable wrong can arise because of a breach of statute contract or tort or a combination of these factors and then you can sue for that uh, in in a court of law so in our in our future lectures i will try to go and dig deeper into these concepts we will talk about different kinds of torts which are fascinating and and you will learn about different kinds of torts of negligence and intentional torts about battery and assault and uh, and false imprisonment and uh, detinue and conversion all these um, very very interesting topics we'll, we'll cover those and but we'll explain to you in practical terms that what kind of set of facts will allow you to seek remedy under those specific torts but thank you for watching this uh, basic lecture that will uh, that will hopefully help you understand how and unfairness turns into an actionable wrong in Ontario courts and generally in, in the courts of Canada. Thank you for watching.